guys, this is Brian, and welcome back to my shop. So hey, this is episode number 10 of Project Split Decision. And I know in the last episode, I said I'd be working on the body lines. And actually, obviously, I had every intention to. I actually took uh, the old Corvette parts here and kind of started using them for mock-up. I'm not going to keep these just for mock-up. But as soon as I put those in place, I uh, realized a problem. And it's not so much evident on the gas car, it's really evident on the uh, electric car. And that problem's down here, down below. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on that and we'll go over some of the detailed problems that we gotta kinda deal with in this episode. So hold on a second here. All right, so now that we've got the Saturn power steering unit as well as that control module, what we need to do is take the original Chevy power steering unit here and convert this to a manual rack. Now there's a number of ways to do this. Some people just open these two ends right here and let it be. I don't prefer to do that because I just don't want crap to get built up in there. The other thing I want to do is actually shave off these plugs because you can see right now they're actually uh, kind of in the way if, with this power start with the 12 volt unit. So if I shave these off, that's going to allow me to actually move the 12 volt battery pretty much anywhere along this plane. So when I do a weight balance of the car, it's actually gonna be a whole lot easier for me to kinda make sure that uh, we've got a nice side-to-side -side weight balance on that. Um, still need to figure out what to do with the brakes. I actually have a pretty good idea what needs to happen here. As you can see right now, the brake opening where it's in original position would actually hit the suspension components. So I kinda have to deal with that. I am gonna get started on converting that manual rack. So if you wanna see how to do that, stay tuned. All right, so here's our lovely Corvette rack. Let me first off by saying this is probably a bad idea. I'm messing with my steering. I should probably go and buy a manual rack. You should not do this at home, so please, if you actually do decide to do this, don't say I said it was a good idea. It ain't. Um, so what I gotta do is actually go ahead and open up this rack and get these seals out of here. They're actually gonna be a seal in here, there's gonna be a seal in here. And uh, to do that, what I need to do is actually get the uh, tie rod ends off first. So let's go ahead and start that and get the tie rods off. All right, so step one is complete. Now I gotta get these uh, little caps off here. They're really pretty straightforward. You just tap them off, take a screwdriver, and whack them off. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, so the next part is I gotta take these uh, end parts off. To do that, I actually need to go ahead and put it in the vise, Apply a little bit of heat because there's usually a bit of Loctite in there and then uh, use a big monkey wrench on there, crescent wrench, whatever you want to call it, and uh, take these ends off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so this is where it's gonna get start getting a little bit messy. Um, I've gotta actually go ahead and pull these off, the uh, power steering actual lines themselves. There's gonna be fluid still left in the system. There's, it, even when it's completely drained, there's always fluid in these cylinders themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and actually drain the fluid into a trash can by moving the rack back and forth. That'll cause the uh, actual guide that's in the middle here to pump the fluid by out both sides. So, so be careful of that should you decide to do this. Again, don't do this. Bad idea, but eh, whatever.
All right, so I didn't make too big of a mess. I got uh, power steering fluid, not everywhere. Let's leave this paper towel, so that's good. So the next thing I gotta do before I can actually split the rack and get to the actual valve itself is just manual pinion gear. To do that, I need to remove this top cap, and I need to remove the bottom cap, and I need to remove the side cap. The side is actually the hardest, so I'm gonna put this back in the vise and actually crack the side thing open here. All right, so next up, I gotta take off this bottom cap. I'm gonna use a dull chisel so I don't mess it up too much. And now to take off this top ring, take this pinion gear out. It needs to spin as it comes out. It's engaged in those teeth. So put the rack kind of in the middle. Boom. All right, so what we want to do, this is part of the valve mechanism here, so I'm going to grind this away. Uh, if I had a lathe that was big enough, I'd actually use the lathe, but I don't. So I'm just going to grind away on the, on the bench grinder here in a second. I do need to go ahead and get the second part of the valve body out, which is in here somewhere, basically. So what I got to do is pull out this pin, kind of retaining pin. pen comes out and now I've got to separate these two pieces uh, so like I said it's it's actually a press fitting in here so I'm gonna put it in the hammer or put it in the uh, vise Told you to be hydraulic fluid in there. All right, so the last part is I gotta get this section off. And that ring is really not accessible. So what I'm gonna do is drill a little hole so I can actually get to it. So that's the seal right there we've got to basically remove. I don't want to actually get rid of this whole piece though. This is actually a stop. This is actually where your uh, lock to lock actually occurs is on this piece of metal here. So what I want to do is just basically grind it down somewhat so that it won't be able to have any kind of sealing ability whatsoever though. All right, rack's kind of ground down. I just basically ground it, uh, got rid of the seal out mechanism, and then uh, just hit it with a sander just to get me uh, any of those burrs off. What I gotta do now is actually, probably should clean this out before I weld on it. Um, I'm gonna cut these off, and then I'm gonna weld these holes closed.
All right, so we've got the uh, got the old pipe welded up, so no more holes. Now we just got to reassemble everything. So there you have it. I've got the shaft back installed. I've actually got to go over to my press and actually press this back into place. And then I'm gonna start reassembling the top part. So give me a second here, I'll gotta go to the press. All right, so that's pressed back into place. I just need to put the pin back in that holds it in. Okay. Now what I gotta do is grind off this valve section in here so that there's nothing uh, that can actually interfere on that part. Okay, now we just gotta reassemble. So I've ground this off, and as you can see it's just kinda hacked up there a little bit and I hit it with a sander just to make sure there was no sharp edges. This actually here is where the bearing actually lives so that's important not to miss with that. And this can only go in one way. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little grease on it ahead of time. All right, so now I went ahead and packed the cap in with some grease cap back on again. There's that. Now I'm going to put the bottom bolt back on. All right, there you have it. It is a manual rack now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit more grease in here, sand it and paint it so I can get it back in the car. Okay, so there you have it. The rack is painted and installed in the car. Well, it's probably not the first and last time it's gonna be installed in the car, but it is currently in the car. Pretty excited about that. Went ahead and started mocking up some of the other pieces that need to actually live up there in the front area, primarily the brakes, the master cylinder. So as you can see, we've got a nice Willwood master cylinder sitting right here. And um, it's probably not the uh, final location of that. It, uh, we won't really know that until I get the pedal kind of set up. And that's on order, so I should know that in a couple days. Um, next is you got the steering, and that's right there. And that actually lives within the side of the frame rail. So right now, everything looks really pretty good. I don't have too many more components that I gotta have to deal with. Um, obviously small lines and stuff like that, but from large structural components that we have to kind of uh, kind of make room for. So looking really, really pretty good in the front here. So I think with that said, that probably makes uh, logical sense to go ahead and call this an end to this uh, episode. Probably got uh, bored you already. But if I haven't and you've kind of found this fascinating and uh, want to know more, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.